Hey, what's up, Wrecking Stories? So, first off, I apologize. I was supposed to go live uh, last night, and, and to be completely transparent, like, I completely, like, zoned out and forgot about it, so I apologize to you guys for that. I just told Siri to set a reminder for me to notify me on Tuesday evenings that I have somewhere to be. So, as you can tell, I'm driving, which is kind of ironic that I, I actually just left Towson University. Um, I just left a the real estate club meeting, so that, that's kind of interesting. Um, and, and we'll get to how that story ties into everything down the road. So I'm trying to drive, and I'm multitasking. I probably shouldn't be talking right now, but I'm doing it anyway because I like breaking rules. So last week we left off, and, and I once again was kind of telling my story as it relates to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And last week was about level one and level two, which is basic needs and the need for safety. And I left off when I was about 12 years old. Hey, Jared, what's up, dude? Oh, I'm safe, brother. I'm safe. Um, and I can, dude, with, the, with this phone, I can like see everything. It's wild. So I can see the comments. So anyway, two big events happened in, in my early years. Um, and number one, my, my parents were divorced, so that, that left an impact on me. And the second major thing that happened, and I forgot to mention this, is I won the state championships in baseball. I think it was like a 12U team. And I threw the last pitch, and I don't know if it was Babe Ruth or what it was, but whatever league I was in, I threw the last pitch and won the state championships. And that feeling was that that I received when I threw the last pitch, and you know, they pick you up and stuff like that. I felt what it was like to win. and. That left a huge impact on me at a very young age, like what it was like to to win, like what a winning, what a winner felt like. So now we're going to move forward to the next phase. So and, and we'll call the next phase is between the ages of twelve and twenty four, and these are my trouble years, as it relates to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, that third phase is about love and acceptance. So. 12, 13, or let's just call it 12 to 24. That whole period of time for me was about, really about finding my tribe. And in middle school, in, in high school, I was a troublemaker. Um, hey, Jen, what's up, hon? Um, Jen, don't tell my kids any of these stories. So I was a troublemaker in high school. Um, Actually, no, ninth and 10th grade, I was like an angel child. I was, I got great grades, you know, I stayed home on Friday nights, watched Dukes of Hazard, but I didn't feel like I had this tribe or this clique that I, when it comes back to love and acceptance, I didn't feel that I had this acceptance level. I was always kind of quirky. Um, I just felt like I thought differently than, than most kids my age. So being that I didn't find my tribe, I went to whatever tribes that would, in my mind, accept me. And that led to like a lot of partying. Like I, I wanna say I was a professional partier. Um, matter of fact, my 11th grade year, I got into several car accidents. I actually flipped a car over, um, almost literally almost died like I literally rolled my car over um, after leaving a party and luckily I, I lived through that um, I, I just partied a lot uh, to the point where I got into trouble uh, I think it was the first time no that was later when I went to jail almost went to jail um, my grades went from really really good to and I still have my 11th grade report card my 11th grade year, my final GPA, it was like a 0.79 or 0.97, something like that. So once again, 11th grade year, my final GPA was like less than a 1.0. Um, and I'll be happy to share this. So went from being a good student to being like, holy shit, I never, I think I missed like 73 days of school in my junior year. Um, I was just bad. I mean, thank God 
um, I don't know how my parents made it through to tell you the truth. Uh, was not, I only saw my father every other weekend because my mom had custody. And also during this, t this phase, I learned how to manipulate my parents. Um, not proud of that, trust me, but I really learned how to play my parents one against another. Um, I started working. I got a, a, back then we can get a worker's permit. So I started working at a Little Caesars Pizza. And I want to say I was 14 or 15 years old. And I've worked from that time until now I'm 45 years old. So I, I got my first job at 14 or 15 um, flipping pizzas. And then I would try and hustle candy bars. Like I would go to, it wasn't Sam's Club or Costco back then. It was a place called Macro. So I would go to Macro and buy a box of candy bars or, uh, you know, a 40 count package of candy bars. And then I would sell them out of my locker in high school. So I'd, whatever they cost back then. And I'd sell them for 50 cents or a dollar. And I would hustle candy bars. I got into some other illicit things that I would sell. Um, got in a lot of trouble. My senior year, I got kicked out of my house. I had to move in with my father and um, that wasn't too good. And then I had a, um, a situation where my mother's boyfriend at the time committed suicide. So I'm, matter of fact, I had just started my senior year. I'm living with my father who lived in Calvert County. And, and I went from PG County to Calvert County, which if you all don't know the difference between the two, let's just say that there's a, a little bit of a cultural difference between like one's kind of urban and one's kind of like down in the country. So that was culture shock. I had no friends in my, you know, go from like my junior year being uh, most likely to be seen at a party to my senior year. Literally, I have no friends. Um, but anyway, um, at my girlfriend's house, I get a phone call and my mother's boyfriend committed suicide um, in our house. That was a pretty um, painful, traumatic um, interesting experience to say the least. Uh, my mother was very heavily medicated for, you know, many months after this. And I was basically by myself as a senior. I was living in my mom's house in Lanham. My mom would, um, pay the bills. She'd send me a check. She moved in with my grandparents so I was basically 17 going on 18 years old and I'm living by myself. Uh, at that point in time, I think I was working at, I think I was at, stayed in the pizza business. I'm working at Pizza Hut. Um, yeah, it was an interesting, um, my house was a party house and somehow or another, I actually graduated and I don't know how that actually happened to tell you the truth, but with PG County schools, you didn't have to do a whole lot to graduate from high school. So I graduated and I went on to community college. And truthfully, the only reason I went to community college at this point in time was because that's where my girlfriend was going. So I figured if she's going there, I'm going there. And um, went to PG County Community College. Had no clue what I was going to do with my life, but I knew I wanted to make money. I still had this hustling mentality. I got involved in gambling. Um, so I was drinking. I was using drugs. And God forbid, I hope my kids don't see this. Um, doing a lot of gambling, betting on football games. Like, you know, all the bad stuff that you can do as a child, I'm doing at this point in time. Um, but I did keep a job because I job and me making money funded all of the other things I wanted to do. Yeah, Largo State. That's right. Um, Jennifer, you know that place well. So I went to PG County Community College. College to me was a joke. It wasn't hard for me. It was just like you just had to go. Uh, and then I eventually transferred into Maryland. Uh, and this is probably 20 years old, I guess. And I originally was going to go to school for marine biology because I like to fish. And after taking a couple of chemistry classes and biology classes, I was like, this stuff sucks. And I'm not going to make any money as a marine biologist. 
So, yeah, Jennifer, you probably know all this anyway. Hey, Mike, what's up, bud? So, I I saw this movie called Wall Street uh, with Charlie Sheen and Michael Douglas. And I was like, oh, that's it. I'm going to be a stockbroker. So, hey, Seth, how are you? So, I, I guess I'm probably 21, 22, and I decided to change my major to finance because I wanted to be a stockbroker. Um, continued to do this, the school thing, never did well in college. Uh, my, and I'm not proud of this, but my whole design from college was to do as little work as possible to get my degree so that I could get out and do what I really wanted to do with my life. So I would literally at the beginning of the semester, I would forecast, okay, what are the, like, what, like the 80, 20 principle. Okay. What percentage of my grade, what, what activities make up the largest percentage of my grade? And if I just aced those activities, then I could slack off on everything else because school wasn't really my thing. It was actually kind of bored me. Um, but I knew I needed a degree to get the job as a stockbroker at Merrill Lynch. So, um, somewhere in there, I got in more trouble, uh, and actually got academically dismissed from Maryland. So they kicked me out, um, uh, and I had to write this long letter as to saying why they should bring me back. Um, and I wrote the long letter and they brought me back to Maryland. And I think like two semesters later, I got academically dismissed again from Maryland. Um, wrote a long letter. They took me back and I eventually graduated. Um, what I learned through that, that 12 year period was, and once again, for me, it was all about finding my tribe, finding where I fit in in society and looking, looking backwards on it and tying this to last week's episode, for me, when my parents were divorced, I used that as a crutch and, and I almost took it as if, oh, there's something wrong with me. Maybe my parents don't love me. Today, I know that that's not true um, and, and I've known that for years now, but so my whole teen years was all about finding out who is John and can he find love and acceptance? And what does John have to do or become or be to be accepted as a human being? And that was a really, really painful process for me. That combined with some of the events that happened, it was really, really a, a dark time, but at the same time, you know, that's what God needed me to do to make me into who I am today. I, I mean, that, that's my beliefs. Um, so anyway, that's kind of like my teen years. Um, so for those that are out there that are like, I'm sure that quite a few people can relate. I had no idea who I was, what I wanted to be. And I got into a lot of trouble trying to figure that out. Uh, college for me was not fun, but it was a means to an end. Um, it, it didn't provide me the clarity that I needed, but it did give me the piece of paper that I needed to get the ultimate job uh, or career path that I thought I wanted. So that's it. Next week, we're going to go into, okay, you know, once again, if you, if you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know, it, it's basic needs, food, shelter, clothing, then safety, then love and acceptance. And then the next phase goes into what I'll call like the ego phase. That's not what they call it, but it's really about, okay, now John's graduated from school. He's going to go out and make tons of money and make his mark on the world. Like I've arrived now. It's kind of like, okay, now I have a degree. I'm a stockbroker. I've earned the right to be important almost. It's, it's really my ego phase. And that leads to some, some interesting, uh, some interesting times as well. Um, so anybody has any questions, you can DM me, you know, I'm a pretty transparent person, but let's just say that, uh, I was not a fine upstanding citizen in uh, that 12 year period. All right, guys, I'm out. Have a great evening and I will see you all next week.